you probably saw this coming. Pixel 7 Pro versus the S23 Ultra. And it's a really interesting discussion because $1199, $899. And this one right here, the Pixel 7 Pro, has been on sale a lot ever since it's come out. Most recently, it might even be still be on sale. I'm not even sure. I haven't looked at it today. But most recently, it's been on sale for $749. And they were even offering activation offers with Best Buy for $599 here recently. So... When you're talking like $600, $500, $300 cheaper, great compelling deal. And I had a lot of people kind of turn their nose up at the OnePlus 11 video stuff the other day saying, oh, it's, yeah, it's OnePlus, it's not reliable, it's not in the same category. I think that it is. I think what you're going to see a lot of this over the next couple of years is probably a reduction in cost when it comes to some of these flagship phones because... It's hard to justify a $1,200 flagship phone when you have such a good compelling phone like the Pixel 7 Pro or the OnePlus 11 at a significantly cheaper cost. And they do 95% of the same thing. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try and tell you that the Pixel 7 Pro in, is better than the S23 Ultra. And in some ways, it's definitely not. But it's also several hundred dollars cheaper. So you go, okay, well, price per value with what I'm getting, how does that work out for me and what you get as an end result? Looking at both of them, they're both top-of-the-line flagship phones, and we are in an area of diminishing returns now. Because even though this is like a 2.85 gigahertz top speed, and this is a 3.36 gigahertz top speed, in most instances, it's basically not tangible. <laughs> because almost everything you do on the phone, it's so powerful now. It's not like where we're at two, three, four, five years ago, where we really relied so much on that top-end speed. I mean, the thing is, is... Both of the phones, there's a lot of throttling going on by the system because it doesn't need to run at 100%. The only time you're really ever running at 100% is basically when you're running on like top-end AAA gaming, you're doing Geekbench bench testing scores, and you're doing some high-end video recording and all that stuff. That's really the only time you're ever really running top-end. So nuts and bolts, both of them very significant when it comes to what they have under the hood. Tensor 2. So the Pixel 7 is the Tensor G2, very good chip. Uh, if you look at the Geekbench store, scores, though, it pales in comparison to what you get with the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 in the S23 Ultra. It has so much raw horsepower, it really makes up for a lot, and it creates a big gap in some areas. But again, where you'll see that, that's a good question, because as I use both of these day, to in, day in and day out, and I've used the Pixel 7 Pro a lot, and if you've watched my channel, you know I've covered this phone extensively along with the Pixel 7. I think it's a great phone. So, under the hood, Tensor G2, Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. And then we both have 5,000 milliamp batteries, 120 hertz refresh rates, Quad HD Plus resolutions on them. And uh, funny, both of them have fairly underwhelming charging. So, you get like 30 watts. I think 33 is, is peak. But basically 30 watts with the Pixel 7 Pro, 45 watts with the S23 Ultra. Both of these for big 5,000 milliamp battery flagship phones, kind of underwhelming in the charging department, especially when there's so many phones out now that do a much better job in that department. But they both have wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, IP68 dust and water resistance, the whole nine yards. Gorilla Glass Victus, Gorilla Glass Victus 2, everything that you could possibly ask for. And then on the front end, there are some differences. And you get a six points, ooh, it's kind of blowing out the screen there. Let me turn that down. So you get a 6.7 inch AMOLED display over here, 6.8 inch AMOLED display with the S23 Ultra. Now the S23 Ultra display, markedly nicer. Now the Pixel display, it looks good. I've never had any complaints or problems with it and it's gone a long way in the last couple of years when it comes to brightness, but still the peak brightness is quite a bit lower, especially the average overall brightness is also lower, but it's still very good. I don't really have any complaints with it, but if you put them side by side, you're going to notice that this is what Samsung's known for. Samsung, best screens out in the market. I mean, they make the screens for this, by gosh. <laughs> Samsung, I made a video the other day talking about how the Pixel 7 Pro, or the Pixel 7, is the best Samsung phone out of the market right now because basically 51% of the parts in this phone are made by Samsung. So it's just kind of one of those things the way the market works. But overall, yeah. I, Samsung is basically always going to win in the display department, but that's not saying that this is a bad display. It looks very good. They're both very fashionable, good-looking phones, and then you kind of get the more simplistic look with the camera bar on the back here. They both have the three cameras. You get the primary camera, you get the ultra-wide, you get the telephoto. 
and they both have optical image stabilization. They both have great zooms and all that great stuff. Where you're going to see some big things that are different, though, is the you got the super zoom over here with the S23 Ultra. You can do the hundred times super zoom. You get the best moon shots basically out of any phone you can get in the U.S. market. It's really good in that department. It even has a pro camera and video mode, which the Pixel doesn't. The Pixel tries to do everything with the chip. And that's why the Tensor G2 really excels. It, it excels in machine language, AI, all that good stuff, doing all the stuff on, doing all the smart stuff on the phone. Where like you get the best speech to text, you get the best speech translation because it does all that stuff right here on the phone. It's not sending it off to another database, not having to be processed somewhere else and sent back to the phone, especially like with Siri and with the iPhones, which is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Samsung's pretty good, but it's not as good as Google. And then you look at other software stuff like the picture unblur. You also get the magic eraser and you get all the other cool stuff that you can do on here. So uh, Google, it really has a lot of great things to offer in the software and the services department. And of course you get three years of operating system updates, five years of security patches. And then with Samsung, four years of operating system updates, five years of security patches. And a lot of people Try and put that as a negative, but really in reality it works out to about the same. Because whenever this phone comes out, the Pixel, it comes out with a new version of Android several months before the Samsung phone is out. So it's really kind of like three and a half years almost because it's it's not quite it's not quite a full year longer that Samsung gets support. Ultimately it ends up being about the same, really. So it sounds good, it looks good on paper, but Samsung comes out quite a little bit ways after the Pixel does, so it's not not quite as big of a gap as some people would lead you to believe. But still, a lot of people don't keep their phones for five years anyway. But they both get great security software update support, five years of security patches. It's funny because Google, for the longest time, was the industry leader when it came to software security patches and all that stuff. And they've basically been passed up by Samsung. <laughs> Samsung's basically beating them at their own game. And it's really funny because Google makes Android. Right, <laughs> and they make the Pixel phone. So you would think they would be the best. I mean, they are basically tied with the best. But Samsung has been a little bit more reliable the last year or so. And yeah, I'm really, really surprised. And way to go, Samsung. So both of them excellent software experience. You get the more stock, bare bones experience over here, and then you get One UI over here. And apparently TikTok came on and showing Joe Rogan. But yeah, their software experience are both great. It's just really what do you want? Uh, do you want a more bare bones stock experience like you get with the Pixel, which isn't even so stock anymore? They've changed so much. Material U really changed things up. More colors, more vibrancy, more features baked in. Really, they've come a long way. Like I used to hate stock Android. Like, I did not like it at all. It just felt so boring and just unenjoyable and bland. And now they've made so many advancements over the last couple of years. I like the Pixel UI a lot. And then, of course, One UI is my favorite. And it just keeps getting better and better and better with age as Samsung continues to update it. And they've done a good job. And One UI 5.1, it's fantastic over here as well. So I think software is kind of a tie. If you look at both of them, both of them have their pros and their cons. And so many people are like, oh, I hate Samsung. They have all this bloatware. That's One UI. It's not bloatware. It's just Samsung uses their own apps. They want uniformity. They want control over the process. They want you to use their stuff. Uh, what we associate with bloatware used to be back in the day where it's like, okay, you get a phone from AT&T and there's 20 different apps already installed on there that you can't remove, right? So One UI and Samsung, their proprietary apps, I don't really consider that bloatware. So you've got that. Now, big changes here. 200 megapixel camera. Now, it takes good photos. And I've been reading some stuff online. I'm not the biggest camera guru in the world. I still need to go out and take some more photos. I'm going to New York this week. I'm going to take some photos because I'm going to do my full review of the S23 Ultra. And then beyond that, I'm going to take both cameras. I'll have the Pixel 7 Pro and the S23 Ultra. And I'm going to do some actual side-by-side -side comparisons because I want to make a Pixel 7 Pro versus S23 Ultra kind of camera comparison video. A lot of stuff I'm seeing is kind of giving a slight lead over the Pixel with Samsung. And if that's true, if that holds up, that's really surprising because Samsung is always kind of like not quite as good as the Pixel. The Pixel is always like number one. Samsung's already a couple down, down, a couple down the list. But still, anything Samsung and iPhone you get with Apple and Pixel, they all take such good photos. I mean, it's not like you're losing anyway, right? And they take really good photos. Where you get the big leg up though, 
the processing speed and the shutter speed. So if you take a photo with a 200 megapixel camera on the S23 Ultra, like it's it's ridiculous. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. All right, so we're gonna take this photo, right? Like it takes a really long time. See, look how long it has to process. So take the photo, pixel just fell on the floor. <laughs> you take the photo, look how long it takes. Like it takes a really long time to process the photo. And that's not some, and even if you go to 50 megapixels, so 50 megapixels, it still takes a while to process. Like it's not quick. And then we'll just go to regular, regular three by four. And this is regular. And you can see there's still a little bit of a delay. It's not the fastest in the world. Let me pick up my phone. All right, I left that in there for the blooper. So the pixel and taking photos, right, it starts working the shutter pretty much instantaneously whenever you press the button. So I think there's still a leg up there, but definitely you don't get the same level of processing. And if you want to take a 200 megapixel photo with the S23 Ultra, low light, night mode kind of stuff, oh boy, it takes a while. Like you better have that shot framed and you better be ready to press the button because if it's one of those once in a lifetime opportunities, you better make sure you get it right because you're not going to get a second chance. A lot of slowness there, a lot of processing going on, a lot of the whole shutter lag thing. So I think in the responsiveness department and some of the features, I think day to day, I think you still mostly get a better shot. You get a more accurate shot more quickly with the Pixel, but Samsung is caught up a lot. And just with the photos I've taken, they've been nearly as impressive to me as, as the photos I initially took when I got my Pixel 7 Pro. So I got to give Samsung a big thumbs up this time. They have done a great job in really stepping up their camera game, especially across the board, like across the whole spectrum. And I, I think you know, the Pixel really did do a lot better with the video this last year, but the S23 Ultra, I think, is still better in the video department. And of course, there's one thing that's noticeably missing from this phone, the Pixel 7 Pro. What is it? Voila, no S Pen. But that's part of the price tag that you pay when you get the S23 Ultra. Like that's part of the reason why it costs $1,199. You get the S Pen, 256 gigabytes of internal storage baseline, and that's really good especially since it does 8K video. The Pixel doesn't do 8K video, but it does 4K, 60 on the front and the back. I don't really see much of a need for 8K video, but from what I'm seeing from other folks, especially now with the 8K at 30 frames per second and being able to crop it down, I, it is more usable. So I will give it that. And it's also more future-proof. I mean, probably in three or four years, there's going to be more prevalent 8K content, 8K displays out there that you could take advantage of. So... I think that that's probably an emphasis. Of course, Samsung also makes 8K TVs, right? <laughs> so they're probably going to make a camera that supports 8K video. So lots of good things going on here. Uh, some of the freebies are nice too, though. Uh, if you take a look at the Pixel 7 Pro, you get the free VPN, the quarterly feature drops. And uh, like I said, software, I think, is really kind of, I think software is kind of a tie. The cameras, I think, are just about a tie. I mean, there are some areas the Pixel excels. There are some areas where the Samsung excels. Battery life, I definitely give the leg up to Samsung. And it's funny because if you take a look at the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 on like the benchmark scores and the Antutu, it only says it gets like 2 extra percent better rating on battery than the Tensor G2, but in real life, that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how it works at all. Uh, this phone, the S23 Ultra, definitely gets better battery life for me than the Pixel 7 Pro. But the Pixel 7 Pro is not bad. I mean, I consistently have gotten over six hours screen on time, which is good enough. But when you're able to get like eight plus with the Samsung, that really, really turns some heads. And they both have they both have nice displays. They both have hole punch cameras on the front. The selfies, selfies are both great. Again, I think the cameras are pretty much, there are some areas a little bit better, some areas a little bit worse in each one. But both have great camera setups. So you can't go wrong with either one of these. And then I think Samsung has better speakers. I think it also has a better audio experience for Bluetooth with the Dolby. The Dolby Atmos really makes the big difference when it comes to earbuds. And I've paired earbuds with the Pixel, and then you listen to them with the Samsung, and it, they sound almost like a completely different earbud. So wired wireless audio, you're going to win with the Samsung. Uh, the modem is better on the Samsung, and also you're going to have less heat issues. Now, the Pixel 7, Pixel 7 Pro with the Tensor G2 don't have nearly the same amount of heat issues that you used to get with the Pixel 6. But every once in a while, they'll still creep in, especially doing things like GPS and with you doing long-term recording for videos and stuff like that. Playing games, you might notice it some. Definitely a lot cooler when it comes to the Samsung. But Samsung also is doing a lot of throttling, too. So 
Yeah, uh, definitely the battery and the performance wise, I, I got to give it to the Samsung, even though in most day to day tangible stuff, they're both flagship phones. And, and the Pixel, especially, has come a long way and made a significant improvements over last year's Pixel 6. So, again, $899 versus $1199, $300 MSRP difference. And then being able to get one on sale mostly all the time, <laughs> it's on sale quite frequently for $749. That's a pretty big price difference. And then another area that shows up is biometrics. So biometrics, Samsung wins. Uh, it has the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which is a higher level of security, more reliable, and they've really got this thing fine-tuned. The selfie cameras for facial recognition, I mean, I think they're both kind of about the same to me. The Samsung might be a little bit better uh, when it comes to low-light facial scanning, but still not the greatest in the world. And then for the Pixel with the optical fingerprint sensor, it's gotten a lot better. It's significantly better than last year's Pixel 6. I think it's plenty fine and reliable. I don't have any problems with mine. I know some people do complain about it, but some people complain about the Samsung stuff too. Like everybody, I want, there's something everybody's always going to complain about. Now, other areas, reliability. I think quality assurance, I, I think is probably a little bit better with the Samsung. They've historically been better in that department. We have had the information and the news breaking about some people's glass breaking on their camera lens, some people's buttons popping out of their Pixel 7 series phones. I, that's something that hurts their, their reputation. I think, by and large, it's probably okay. I think it's probably a small subset of people, maybe some quality assurance issues. Hopefully, we can get some warranty support behind that from Google. But you don't hear about that with Samsung. Like, their quality assurance is pretty darn high. So, I got to give a leg up there, too. Like, we're not hearing anything about that, about Samsung phones. We haven't for a long time. So, I think I've covered most of the bases. Uh, definitely, they're both worth their own perspective, like, respective price points. Uh, I think this is worth $1,199. And also one other point, starts at 8 gigs of RAM, you get 12 with the Pixel 7 Pro. I, and a lot of folks also think that you should be comparing the Pixel 7 Pro with the S23 Plus. The S23 Plus, I don't think, contends with this phone. I made a video to the same effect. If you take a look at the Pixel 7 Pro, it has Quad HD Plus. The S23 Plus doesn't. It has a 5,000 milliamp battery. The S23 Plus doesn't. It has a LTPO screen that throttles down to 10 hertz, 10 frames per second. I mean, 10 hertz, basically. It refreshes 10 times per second. Saves battery. The S23 doesn't. It's got an LTPS. It goes down to like 45, 40, 40 something, 40 something hertz. Also, you also have the macro, the macro camera you have on here. You don't have that on the S23 Plus. So there, there's just a lot of different things that it doesn't really compare. The, the Pixel 7 Pro is the top of the line Google phone. S23 Ultra, top of the line Samsung. I would recommend zero people buy the S23 Plus over the Pixel 7 Pro. I think it's a fantastic phone. And I think that it makes a great argument. I mean, I've talked about this a lot over the last couple of months. Google is doing a fantastic job with their pricing and with the premium level quality, high flagship quality characteristics that you're getting. And then, bam, $1,199. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it. It's the top of the line phone. The best Android smartphone you can get in the world right now, I think, is this one. But when you, like, apples to apples, oranges to oranges, and we're in the same ballpark, both of these phones are very, very similar in a lot of different ways, especially when it comes to the camera capabilities, the day-to-day -day performance and stuff. I, there are things that you get with the S23 Ultra. You get DeX, you get wireless DeX, you get the pass-through charging whenever you want to turn that on for like when you're playing games and stuff. There's a lot of thoughtful things that really help make it stand out as a top-of-the-line flagship. But the Pixel 7 Pro is also very, very good. So I'm not saying the S23 Ultra is not as, is worse than the Pixel 7 Pro. I'm not saying the Pixel 7 Pro is better. But it's like when you go look at a BMW and a Mercedes. I mean, they both have certain things to offer, but this one right here is just in a slightly higher level class with some extra features. And that really, I think if there's a big legacy there, it really stands out. A lot of people, a lot more people are going to buy the S23 Ultra than are the Pixel 7 Pro. But the market share, the markets they compete in, completely different story. So at the end of the day, most people that are going to buy this phone aren't going to buy this phone. <laughs> and most people that are looking at this phone aren't going to buy this phone. So buy what makes you happy. Speak with your wallet. Get the one that works out best for you. And... I think both of them have a lot of great things to offer. I think Google's proven they've really stepped up in a big way the last couple of years, really advancing themselves in the premium flagship category, but also at a great price. And then Samsung still gives you the best of the best of the best, and they, they certainly charge you for it. But there's good reasons for a lot of it. So that's all I've got in this comparison video. I hope this was helpful. Hope this gave you some good insight, with like especially philosophically, regarding both of these phones, what they're capable of. 
and hopefully this was able to help you out if you're looking to make a decision on these. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please go down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. And if you've got one of these phones, or if you had both, or if you ditched your Pixel 7 Pro and went to the S23 Ultra, I want to hear from you. Sign off in the comments. We'll talk about it. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys next time. And I also forgot to say, like, you know, hit the like and subscribe and all that stuff. If you want to do that, go ahead. I'd love to have you back. Come back anyway, even if you don't subscribe. Peace out.